Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Rosetta and the Well, which is a horror game where a girl meets a mermaid in a well that has no ulterior motives. For some time now, there's been this strange little well just off the back garden of my house. I'm not sure where it came from or how long it's been there. All I know is that it simply showed up one morning after a particularly heavy storm the night before. Maybe it was because I'm used to seeing strange events, or because nothing eventful seemed to come of it, but I initially didn't pay it too much thought. But on one occasion, while I was out tending to my garden, I swore I could hear something coming from within it. It sounded like... a voice. An indistinct sort of whimpering, mixed with the sound of sloshing water. Hmm. Choices. This is a multiple ending game, by the way. Uh, it already says it on its game page. Let's uh, watch and wait. I rooted myself in place for a few minutes, listening to the noise until I was sure it was not coming from anywhere besides the well. The longer I waited, the more insistent the sound seemed to become. Even so, I dare not move. It's like, come on over here, Protag. Come on, come here, come here, Protag. I couldn't help but feel that something bad would happen if I were to give in. And yet, despite all reason and logic, a small part of me felt drawn towards the sound. No, you know you're not. No, you're not. As if, as if an outstretched hand was beckoning me for the murky depths. Which part of me do I listen to in the end? Turn to flee! I got up and ran from the side of the well, back into the safety of my home. Nice! I avoided the garden for the rest of the day. No matter how hard I tried to drown them out, the image of the well... The sounds coming from it. I could rid neither of them from my mind. Ultimately, I never did find out what was making that noise. Nor did I have the heart to do so. I suppose that this choice would be the correct one, in the long run. Yes. So then, why do I feel so... scared, right now? Don't think about that. That's your stupid part thinking. Neutral N. Scaredy cat. Alright, approach the well. Somehow the well looked eerier, viewing up close. It made my discomfort rise to a considerable degree. It was probably from the early morning dark, but the water looked so murky and black, more like ink, if it was just a bit less viscous. Not to mention I couldn't make out anything in the darkness. Looks like my soul. The sound became clearer now. I could definitely tell it was a voice, but the words were too muffled to discern. Call out into the well? Hello? Are you all right down there? No response. Perhaps I wasn't loud enough that time. Call out again. Hello? Can you hear me? Still nothing. Perhaps it was all just a trick of the wind. Ooh, I'm the wind! The well looked full of water, so there's no way an ordinary land dweller could lurk at the bomb without drowning. But an unordinary land dweller... But I can't help but wonder still. So would leaving now be the neutral ending again? Actually, no, I've already spent far too long pondering this. Even if there was something or someone down there, it'd probably be wise not to rush into things head on. I suppose the best option now is to turn back. I don't feel confident enough to handle some on my own. Okay. Sure. Are you upset? Like, you came over here and you gotta leave? What was that? No, it couldn't be. Could it? What the hell? You're not a mermaid, you're just a goth with really good, like, technique for holding your breath down underwater. Hello there, young lady. I take it you were the one calling for me beyond this well. No, I was just walking by. I suppose you could say that. Who? What are you exactly? Ah, oh, where are my manners? I'm Galatia, the mermaid of the well. It is a pleasure to be acquainted with you. 
a mermaid. I take it you're not all too familiar with merfolk. No, I'm actually quite familiar with merfolk. I've grown up around them, as a matter of fact. I just didn't expect to encounter one in my backyard, of all places. I understand. And your name is... State your name, say nothing. Hmm. So we'll, uh... I'm gonna go say nothing. You know, we're gonna go for all endings, so though. Don't necessarily worry about not seeing certain things. Don't trust it. Actually, on second thought, you don't have to tell me. I shall simply call you Madam for now. Is that okay? I guess so. Very well. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Before my eyes was a mermaiden with snow white hair and a complexion just as pale. I can certainly see where she gets her name from. But among all that white, what stood out in particular were those eyes. Not the not the black crackling evil hands. Those piercing ebony eyes. Something about them felt eerie, uncanny even. Almost like the eyes of a porcelain doll. I've seen many mermaids growing up along the coast of Winterport, but never one so unsettling in appearance. Maybe it's a more accurate mermaid. Even so, I decided to continue speaking with her. It's too early for me to draw any definite conclusions. Now then, madam, what business do you have with me? I heard a strange noise coming from this well, so I decided to investigate. Dear, you must have overheard me then. I apologize. It's just... It's been such a long time since I've had any form of contact with the world above. It can be lonely down in these deep waters, with nothing but my own thoughts to keep me company. It's an absolutely miserable experience, I'll admit. Oh no, I'm sorry to hear that. You needn't apologize. None of this is your fault. In fact, I've grown quite accustomed to the solitude. But even so, It'd only be a matter of time before it would drive me mad. So I like having someone to talk to every now and again. So I can take your soul. Maybe we'll be the evil one. <laughs> As such, I wish to cherish your company before I have to leave again. Would you kindly spare me some of your time to that end? Oh, um, I suppose I have some time on my hands. Good, good. Let's take our time get acquainted with one another. Starting with you. Hmm. I've been fascinated with the world above for as long as I can remember, and I have more than enough time to think of plenty of questions to ask about it. But for brevity's sake, I'll just stick with three. Is that alright? Go ahead. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Now, um, tell me a hobby of yours. What does one do to pass eternity? A few things. Cooking, drawing, sewing... But one thing I've been particularly into is... Gardening or reading? Hmm. Uh, reading, sure. Go for reading. You unlock the reading route. Cat! Hey, that cat's got three eyes! Oh no, it's Lovecraft's cat. Reading. There's no better evening pastime than getting cozy in my reading chair by the fire and getting lost in a good book. Sometimes with some hot cocoa, sometimes while my cat Camellia sleeps beside me. Some particular genres I'm into are romance, mystery, anything gothic, paranormal thrillers, and so on. My mother was a novelist for a time. My father was dabbled in poetry while he was away seafaring. So I suppose that's part of why I love literature so much. Are there any particular stories you like? Well, if I had to pick one, I'd say... The Shadows Among Us, a novel by Shirley Blackwood. Oh, The Shadows Among Us. What's the story behind that one? It follows a paranormal detective, Oliver Balfour, investigating a particular, peculiar missing person's case. As in, a person goes missing every month, and then returns the day after as a walking silhouette. Without giving too much away, the story can get pretty intense, and downright scary at times, but it also has moments of tenderness. For instance, like when Oliver comforts a distraught little girl whose mother was claimed by the phenomena, you know, that title alone already had me intrigued. 
but your description makes me think this is a story I'll really end up enjoying. I'm thrilled to hear that, Galatia. If you're looking for more book recommendations, do look to me if you can. Wow, such valuable insight. I must thank you, madam. Now moving on from hobbies, I want to know more about where you live so I can stalk you. Eat your soul. You mean my hometown? Winterport? But of course. I'll be honest, like, I'm actually, I'm just like naturally suspicious of anything like supernatural. Cause you, you know what the, the, their intent almost always is. But despite that, I, I, I would actually be like chill about it. I'd be like, yeah. How you doing? You suck, you suck souls for living? That's cool. Cause like, what are you gonna do to me? Think you can stop me? Nah, that stuff doesn't work. I used to like talk to these people all the time. Hey, suck a no soul out manly. As mentioned before, this well is the only place I've known for a long time. So I'd know more of what. <laughs> I just realized that whole tirade sounded kind of weird and <laughs> lewd. <laughs> I, I just see that now. So I want to know more about what's outside of it. Um, Winterport, it's... I say it's a very lovely town to live in, with lots of nice people and magical beings like yourself. Actually, my house is located just off its outskirts. It takes about five minutes to walk there from here. I see. So about Winterport, what would you say is your favorite part of it? Honestly, if I had to pick one thing that most interests me, I'd have to say... Doc's a cafe. I'm curious if these actually matter. Like, this is gonna come up be like... I know where your cafe is. Uh, I mean, this is nautical theme, the docks. Sure. Oh, so like mermaids are like all over the place here. The docks. Winterport is widely known for its fishing and cruising industries. When I was younger, my father used to captain a cruise ship known as the Oceanus. I sometimes look out on one of the ship's windows and catch a glimpses of various sea creatures, including merfolk. Merfolk. Like me. I don't even know if you're actually a merfolk. You could be like... Some Disney... Monster thing. I don't know. I would presume, yes. Like you were sealed there for a reason. Speaking of which, Winterport has a very tight but delicate relationship with the Sea King. Oh man, there's all sorts of like things in this world. As long as they pay the proper tribute and respect the balance of the seas, the town is free to do as they please in his domain. If that bond were to ever be broken, then... Hmm. But I digress. You seem to be very fond of the sea. My mother actually used to be a mermaid. Oh! What? This is a sequel to, uh... This is a sequel to Little Mermaid! That is, before she gave up her tail to marry my father. Is that so? So it is. Oh god, we're talking to Ursula. Well, uh... uh yeah, maybe not literally Ursula, but you, you kind of get the point. So... Based on that information... That would technically make me the Sea King's granddaughter. Haha. <laughs> I guess I would make you some form of royalty. Now this is even more fishy. Cause she's a high value target. Ah, oh, I never thought of it like that. I suppose that would make sense, given the circumstances. Well then, I believe this brings us to our last question. This one might be a bit more personal, if that's fine. No worries, Galatia. What do you wish to ask? It's about your loved ones. My loved ones? I apologize for not mentioning this earlier, but to put it simply, I don't exactly have what one would call a family. Not anymore, at least. I don't have any friends, either. The ones I loved, they all abandoned me long ago, leaving me in this well to die alone. Maybe there's a reason for that. Oh, Galatia, that sounds terrible. How could anyone think to do something so cruel? I wonder the same thing every day. Was it Galatia the, uh... It's from one specific legend. The sculptor? Let me, uh, let me actually look that up. Yeah, so I'm wondering if the cracks in your arms are like... Like a sculpture crack or something. I mean, it, I'm, this is very loose. It could be nothing. 
But you, dear, you're not like them. For you to have taken time to speak with me. I only did that in this rod, and trust me, my first instinct was to run. To answer my questions, despite how I, I may appear. That shows you really care, and I'm thankful for that. I mean it. I truly am thankful. I'm happy to have been so helpful to you, Galatia. Now about my question. <clears throat> if there was anyone in your life that you loved most, anyone at all, who would you say that was? Goodness, I have so many loved ones, so that might actually be a bit tricky for me to answer. But if I had to pick someone, that would be... Huh. These are pretty broad. So, if you think of mermaid stories, right? A lot of mermaid stories, maybe not all of them, but... Quite a few end in some form of tragedy, which makes sense. This is a horror game. But it's a little shifting in the sense of sometimes the tragedy is for the mermaid. Um, quite commonly, actually. It's the mermaid that takes the main toll. And sometimes it's the uh, the land dweller or whatever. But um, that's what I'm like. Maybe maybe the mermaid is good. Maybe the twist is in the other direction. You know, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to go with my boyfriend. Because the other ones seem more like normal. This one seems like it'd be the most drama uh, most reaction, I feel like. I was also very tempted about my cat, but... Oh, what? You're a bright... What? You're... They're, they're a moth! My beloved Christopher Heterocera. He's a moth fairy. The prince of the kingdom of Doctera and my dearest boyfriend. Wow, it's... This is royalty, world marrying royalty. We've known each other since childhood, and we've been close for a very long time. One might think him simple-minded. He is such a gentle giant, and treats me with a kindness like no other. Whenever he carries me in his strong arms of his, my heart can't help but flutter. Actually, you know, that match you paying attention, you're right. This moth is like... Like, look at those arms. Like, at first I was just noticing, oh, they're, you know, moth. But like, no, this moth is ready to go. They're ready to bust in your house and eat all your, like, sweaters. It's like I'm being protected by an angel. One with an adorable baby face, a bulky frame, and a voice as soothing as a lullaby. Hey, I doing? I'm a moth. Oh, that sounds so beautiful. And you must be a wonderful girlfriend to him in return, I would assume. I certainly try my best. He's a very, very handsome man, and I want him to have the best I can offer. Sometimes we have our disagreements, like when we were arguing what kind of pie was better to have for dessert. When you want to eat sweater pie? <laughs> it's cinnamon apple. I refuse to believe otherwise. But in the end, I still love him dearly. I feel like I'm being racist towards moths. Sorry to any moths watching. I love moths. Romance may not be for everyone, but I wouldn't trade my love of him for the world. And with that, I believe I have all the answers I need. Thank you again for choosing to speak with me young lady. From what you've told me, I can tell that the world you live in is a truly wonderful and interesting one. I've got no legs of my own, being a mermaid, but I'm grateful nevertheless to have forgotten to hear your descriptions of it. That's great news, Galatia. Oh, it's such a shame I can't seem to help you leave that well you're in. I'd love to show you around Winterport, introduce you to all the wonderful folk within it. Ah, oh, I was so caught up in our conversation I forgot to mention. Oh no, 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 don't witch his house me! There is in fact a way that I could potentially leave, and it just so happens you have the exit key. Exit key? I don't understand. What exactly do you mean by that? Your legs. Here we go! What about them? For me to leave this well would require that I have a pair of human legs. Why not just like, put you like in a golf cart? Would you be okay with that? Legs, such as yours. I've waited far too long for opportunity of freedom, and of your arrival, said opportunity seems to have fallen, finally fallen into my hands. Madam, what I ask of you is this. Take my tail and give me your legs, so that I may escape this hell and experience the human world for myself. So, in other words, you want me to switch places with you? The time between you and me. All the dialogue we've exchanged thus far. All the compassion you've shown me. 
you are so willing to share your knowledge with me, to let me experience your lovely town for your words. Surely, a small favor wouldn't be too much for you to accept. I... I don't... Your legs, dear. Give them to me. Never make a deal with some mermaid or fairy or whatever in a well. Give me your legs. But surely there are better ways to help you, right? Like a golf cart? The Sea King, my grandfather. Perhaps I can talk to him. I can convince him to give you legs. Because that's outstanding. Like, you're living in a magical world. There's like sea kingdoms, there's fairy kingdoms, there's moth people. Oh, there's probably dragons for all we know. And you can't... There's no other way to get you out of that well. You're there for a reason. Like, you know, my mother... I'm afraid that won't work, madame. This well is magic holds me captive. And it has a very specific set of conditions that can't be broken. It's unfortunate to say. But there is no other way for me to leave. Maybe she actually is... Uh... I'm just going to say Ursula. For, for simplicity's sake, I'll just say Ursula. You know, like, with the whole switcheroo thing. That's why she asked us so many personal questions, so that way she knows, like, what to say. Uh, there isn't? No, there isn't. You have to be the one to make the decision. Good lord, what have I got myself into? Perhaps I was right in being suspicious of the well after all. Yes, it's a well of pure black water, and there's a goth mermaid in it. The sounds Galatia made within it. They're asking all those questions. Was it all just an elaborate step to trap me? For what purpose? How do I know she's even telling the truth? She seems so kind from the time I've spoken with her. And what if and if what she says is true, then I can only imagine how much pain or isolation brought her. But would it really be worth it to give up my legs? My life? Just for someone I've only known for a day? Ah, uh, I guess it can't be helped. I have to make a choice now. I ever give my legs to Glacia, leave her behind in the well. I'll have to really think this one through the- No, just refuse. Separate note, it just came to my head real quick. Earlier, uh, tirade or whatever, with the little soul thing. I- I heard percent. I bet before we even get to this part, someone's watching this, they've probably already commented, they haven't got to this part yet. They will hear it later. Someone probably already made a joke, like, you can't stick out Stanley's soul, because it's probably in the trash can. Hard percent, hard percent. I'm gonna see that when I watch the comments. And if you did comment that, before you got to this part, well, now you now you got to admit it. You got you got to admit I caught you. After the fact, um, but yeah, I refuse. I'm sorry, Galatia, but the answer will have to be no. What? Yeah, you didn't think of that one, huh? I I've seen how this goes down. What? We we're having so much fun together, and yet you refuse to do this one favor for me. Ah, uh, Galatia, listen. Of course, I enjoyed our time together. And we've been under different circumstances. I'm sure we could have had an absolutely fantastic friendship. But as it stands, if your freedom comes at the cost of everything I've worked to achieve over the years, my friends, my family, my cat, my books, my garden, my home, my dearest, my life, my soul, my very being, then I'm sorry, but that cost is one I'm unable to cover. Oh man, you have black tears. How could you? How could you be stand to be this heartless? To treat me like garbage! When I've been nothing but nice to you all this time. You. You don't mean that, surely? Glacia, please understand. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'd love to help you if I could. I really would. But as selfish as it may sound, I just cannot bring myself to make such a major sacrifice for someone I've hardly known. I hope you understand. Please forgive me. Later. Loser. You ain't gonna witch's house me. How unpleasant. And to think that my chance was finally within my grasp. I had gotten this close to finally being rid of this rotten vessel, only for the opportunity to be lost at the last moment. That girl. It's truly a shame she isn't as foolish as she appeared to be. Thanks to Manly Badass Hero, subscribe today. With a beautiful face like hers, she very well would have made a fine replacement for Glacia. Where did I go wrong? The mythology worked perfectly thus far. I thought it'd be no different here. And yet... I can't take it anymore. This hunger of mine has eaten away at the very last of my patience. I've come too far to abandon everything now. 
This sadly gives me only one other option. If I can't have my way, then... Then I'll just take it by force! Um... Uh... Bugger! Camellia? Anzana? Anzana, can you hear me? I'm behind you. Yeah, yes, Camellia, I can hear you fine. Then what are you still doing standing there? Hurry and make a run for it, Rosetta. Quick, into the house! Okay, okay, I'm coming. Camellia's prompting, I ran as fast as I could to my house's back door. The black hand's giving chase behind me. You're almost there. Keep going. Yeah, that's a good cat. I'm going as fast as I can. Once inside, I rushed to lock and barricade every door and window I could. I also made sure to close all the currents for good measure. I could vaguely hear loud banging noises outside the house, as the hands desperately tried to find an entrance. I feel so afraid right now. What did I do wrong? No, actually, you did the right thing. What do I do to make it right? It's all my fault. Yes, it's all your fault. Some evil spirit is trying to eat you. I shouldn't have rejected Galatia like that. I should have told her yes. I should have... I... Good work, Rosetta. That should hold them off for a while. You could have gotten seriously hurt if I hadn't called for you back there. What are the words for now? But it won't be long until those demonic hands manage to find a way inside. Rosetta. Rosetta, are you alright? I actually really like these fairy tale style, uh... Story horror games, like it's like the the one with the strawberry witch and stuff, because they have a good build up. Because you know, you know, like how real fairy tales and mythology are. There's always like this build up and just like something bad happens, just something terrible happens, and just like that's why I like these type of stories, because this is technically the classic, most classical form of horror there is. In a way, <sighs> I'm such a fool. How could I let this happen? How could I have been so stupid as to let this nightmare come to fruition? I don't think I can ever forgive myself for this terrible mistake. Oh, Rosetta. Don't say that about yourself, please. You're better than you think. If only I'd been so naive. If I'd been a bit more cowardly, a bit meeker. No. If I'd been the opposite, then I would have lived a happy, fulfilling life. And I wouldn't have had to die like this. <coughs> Meow. There, there, dear. Cry as much as you need to. You have every right to feel the sadness you do now. Just know that I'm here for you. Chameleon. What is it? I'm... a good person, right? Yeah, you're fine! Yes, Rosetta, you're a good person. We don't always make the best of decisions. But we all tend to do that sometimes. Even the great geniuses of this world aren't immune to this fact. What ultimately matters is how you handle your mistakes. You try to better yourself as a result of those mistakes, like not going near the well. So what you're saying is... There's still a chance to fix this? With fire. A chance. As long as we stay close- We've wasted too much time here. If we're to get out of this situation alive, we need to act quickly. The kitchen's the next room over. There's surely something in there that can help. Fire. Let's go. No, this won't too. It's no good either. Camellia and I desperately search the kitchen for something, anything that can help defend ourselves against the approaching threat. We search high and low, from the cupboards to the drawers to the pantry. In our painstaking efforts, we eventually came across... A bag of salt or a kitchen knife. So I think the bag of salt might be the correct one, based on how salt is with certain spiritual beings and whatever, but, you know, good old kitchen knife, let's go. I quickly reached for the largest knife in my knife drawer. The blade glistened softly as I examined in the light. It's not a lot. And I doubt it'll be much help against an army of rapidly extending arms. But I suppose it's worth a try. It's just like clockwork. A pair of arms broke through one of the kitchen windows. You're kind of like that one antagonist from, uh, Ray Zero. I never free burst into the living room ceiling. Single mind in their goal, the arms all rushed toward me like a pack of ravenous wolves. And at that moment, I knew what I had to do. With the kitchen knife in hand, I went on the attack. Holy cow. I wanted to swing and stab my knife into the nearest arms. 
I can really attack some of the others with her teeth and claws. One, two. One, two. And through and through the kitchen blade went snicker, snack as a large black arm swarmed us from all directions. Looks like they're slowing down, finally. That's good to hear. Now we just need to... What the? No. 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 You can't be serious. How have those bloody arms still not exhausted themselves? Even so, we did our best to fight tooth and nail until an opportunity opened up, so opened up for us to escape. But that opportunity never came. The arms kept coming at such a rate that it became a nigh impossible to fend them off. Before we had any proper time to react, we were completely overpowered. I struggled to break free from the hand's grasps as my vision began to blur. The arms had become so numerous by then that they almost seemed to merge with one another. I was beginning to see much more dark than light, too. Said I. Wait, wait, I... Camellia! Camellia, is that you? Rose, well, don't worry. Fight you! I'm right here, Camellia. Please help me! Don't let them take me, I beg you! So sorry, was it? Couldn't... If I... You... Camellia, no! No, he didn't fail me. Please stay with me, I don't want to die! I don't want to be alone! No, you're not gonna die. She has use for that body. Come to me, Camellia! Please! Please! That was the last thing I remembered shouting before everything went black. When I opened my eyes again, I found myself in the depths of the, a black ocean. There was no way to tell up from up or from down, no amount of time I'd spend in this place. I looked around, but I didn't see anyone or anything else near me. No possible exits. No signs of Camellia. I couldn't even find that damn knife. A part of me wanted to scream for help but my body felt incredibly heavy and tired. I couldn't even bring myself to wiggle my digits. No, oh man, these are kind of sus. I felt several of those hands grabbing hold of my arms and legs, but I remained motionless still. I no longer had the strength to fight back. My senses were fading fast. It was only a matter of time before I succumbed to unconsciousness. I'm so tired. So very tired. Tired of running, tired of fighting. Tired of fearing for my life. Perhaps if I closed my eyes and let myself drift off for a bit, then everything would eventually turn out fine. After all I'd been through, I wanted nothing more than to sleep. Yes, sleeping would be the easiest thing to do right now. If nothing else, I can at least find solace in knowing that this nightmare will eventually end. Soon, very soon, it'll all be over. I won't have to worry about anything anymore. The end. It's right within my grasp. I can see it now. Here it comes. Banana. La Rosa Blue. Huh. Oh, I wonder what's going on here. So I've actually reloaded all the way back to this choice. We're going to give up our legs this time. Let's see if that's an instant bad end. When I was young, my parents told me to help others whenever possible. Especially if they're a Disney-like antagonist. I've heard various stories about heroes saving others whenever they were in danger. You know, a lot of those heroes died trying to save others. Because the others turned out to be like some kind of evil trick. Of brave knights slaying demons and protecting the loved ones from evil. Like, I, I'm serious. I look up a lot of like these stories. To be honest, I've always wanted to be a good person. To be a heroine that people could rely on and look up to. I didn't like seeing others in pain. And I feel like a bad person leading them to suffer. Is this even worth being called a sacrifice, I don't think. It's quite laughable, really. I may very well be heading towards my death right now, yet I still accepted her offer, because I felt like I was doing a good deed. Am I doing this because she was being genuine in her words, or am I just being that blinded by my sense of altruism? Regardless of the truth, I've already made my decision. Even if I were to die from this, if my death results in the improvement of many lives, then at least it won't be in vain. Is this the bike thing? You know what I'm talking about. If you know, you know. <laughs> I'm so glad we could come to an agreement, little lamb. Now, allow me to take those off your hands. I mean, off my feet. It was then that I was seized by several black hands emerging from the well. Their touches felt cold and wet and their grasp felt almost firm as they gradually brought me into the water. 
This honestly should have been terrifying. Yet I was unafraid. Calm, even. I mean, the, the, the multiple arms does have, like, a tentacle, like, kraken, like, octopus kind of feel. As I was being dragged into the watery abyss, I thought about my past. I thought about my garden, my book collection, my cafe dates with Christopher. As I slowly caught lost consciousness, I thought about my parents, Camilla, I turned to Sue's siblings and everyone and everything I had come to care for by that point. I thought about Galatia and the conversation I had with her. Actually, I don't think I've seen Galatia at all since I've agreed to give my legs to her. Perhaps she's already left and I just didn't notice. At least, that's what I chose to believe. Ah, uh, I would have known my loved ones are around to watch me right now. I don't want them to feel hurt by my disappearance. I'm gonna call this the stupid ending. It's not even a bad ending. This one's just like... No. No, 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 yeah, no, no, you didn't choose this. Interesting. Her her legs were twisting into a mermaid tail shape. Almost, almost like a Junji Ito story. Oh, looks like there's someone at the door. Hopefully they brought some good news along with them. Um, give me a moment, please. I'll be right with you. Then the mom. Ah, oh, Prince Heterosera, a cipher of sore eyes as always. Good afternoon, Miss Holloway. I uh, hope you don't mind me coming over here so suddenly. Oh, not at all, sweetheart. As you know, you were like buff. I, I should change that voice. Come, come, make yourself at home. Thank you, ma'am. Eugene, we have company. Well, you are tall. So, like, the art style is kind of simplified, so you, can, you can't... But you can kind of tell just by, like, the dad. And then you look at the size of his arms, because he's not a small guy. He's, like, a little chibified, but that's about it. And you look at, you know, the moth here, and the moth's legs are, like, the, bigger than the dad's arms. Or, uh, bigger than his legs, too. Like, look at those things. Hi, right, Christopher. Good to see you, young lad. It's good to see you also, Mr. Holloway. Uh, but they, they described the moth as having a soft voice, so uh, I think that's what they said, right? I'm just, I'm just doing the deep voice because it's funny. So what brings you to our humble abode? Um, I wanted to ask about your daughter. Rosetta, I mean. What about her? I want to know if either of you knew where she went lately. I've had a particular question in my mind recently. Oh, no. So I went to her house to let her know how I was feeling. But she wasn't anywhere to be found. And nobody asked knew where she was either. Not even her pet cat. I figured that you two would have some idea. So that's why I'm here now. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, sweet Christopher. I'm so sorry. What? Miss Holloway, what does that mean? Lad, let me break the news to ye. The nicest possible way I can think of. You see, Rosetta's been declared missing for several days now. We ain't seen or heard anything of her since the 12th. Nobody has. We've done everything in our part to locate her. We've spoken to my mother, my father, my siblings, Eugene's mother, Camellia, the Winterport Investigation Department, just about every local we could think of. I recall even the Tiramisu household got involved at one point. But alas, our search party has turned up nothing. Since you came in and asked for your whereabouts, I take it the information hadn't yet reached the fair folk over Nupterra. Hmm, I don't think so. I see. Uh, well, if either of you need me, I'll be in the back guard trying to cool my head. I believe the stress is finally starting to get to me. Take all the time you need, Barmy. This whole thing's been hard on all of us. So. Yes, Mr. Holloway. You said something earlier about wanting to ask Rosetta a question, correct? 
Yes, I did say that. Alrighty then. I don't mean to be nosy and all, but... Would you be okay with telling me what exactly has been bothering you? I suppose I can do that. Go on, then. Well, I... I... No worries if you can't find the words right away. I know that part tends to trouble you. I want to ask where is it ever had in marriage. Ah, what's that? You want to marry the girl? Yes, sir. I mean, we certainly like each other. I mean, a couple for about five or six years now. We've known each other for about twenty-ish years at this point. She's nice and caring and sweet and... And she's got a cute face and a lot of cooking. I like the way she laughs and she always wears the prettiest outfits. We share a lot of the same hobbies and she... Whoa, sit down, you boy. I think I get what you're trying to say. Sorry, sorry, I just... Anyway, I really want to spend the rest of my life with her. I was wondering if she'd be okay with being my wife. She's dead. Oh, well. You certainly have my support. You're a brave fellow who's willing to give his all to make his sweetheart happy. And I like that. Reminds me of my younger self, actually. She'll be fine alive. I'm sure we'll make the finest husband Rosetta could ever have. I appreciate your blessing. Thank you, Mr. Holloway. Don't mention it. Um, Eugene. Do you remember there being a water well in the back garden? A water well? I don't remember having a well installed back there. G what is... Honey, I... I think you should come here and see this. Huh? What is it, Bobby? What's going on? Mr. Holloway, what's happening? Is everything okay with Mr. Holloway? A mermaid. I don't get it. What's one doing in a well of all places? No, Eugene, it's not just that. This mermaid. The mermaid in the well. It looks... just like... Dear God, you're right. The face, the hair. The heart-shaped birthmark on her lower back. And I can't see a single speck of light in her eyes. Mother. Father. Why are you crying? No, 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 you can't not be. I refuse to believe it. Eugene, please. Please tell me it isn't so. I'm... I don't want to tell you, Bobby. I... Miss Holloway, are you okay? You sound incredibly upset. Yes, Christopher, they're incredibly upset. Christopher, don't come over here. I beg you, please don't. For your own sake. Bobby, I get you don't want the lad to be hurt at all. But I don't think keeping this from me can do any good. What? Keep what from me? Christopher... Is that you I see? No way. Oh, Christopher. My sweet little angel. I'm so glad you're here. Tell me, my love. Do you have any idea how long I've been waiting for this very moment. What was that? Ah, uh, you changed. Whoa. Actually, that's an improvement. Legs to one, mind to none. Alright. Bag of salt. <laughs> sea salt. Sea salt. What exactly do you plan on doing with that bag, Rosetta? Clearly they're a slug. I've heard before in the paper that salt can be used to ward off evil spirits. So I figured that if I throw some of the salt at the hands, they'll scatter and dissipate. Interesting strategy. But are you certain you know what you're doing? No. I'm not too confident either. But salt does me good in the garden and the kitchen. Surely won't let me down here. Alright, Rosetta, I believe in you. And just like clockwork, a pair of arms broke through the one of the kitchen windows. Another three burst into the living room ceiling. Single mind their goal, the arms all rushed toward me like a pack of ravenous wolves. At that moment, I knew what I had to do. Pocket sand! I grabbed a handful of salt and tossed it a few of the arms. Pocket salt! Just as I expected, the arms began recoiling as own pain before they retreated. I tossed more salt in the remaining arms and they all reacted the same way. Is that a working? The hands are scattering, just as you said. Yeah, see? I knew it would work. No time for celebration just yet, however. Quickly to the garden! With a bag of salt under my arm, I rushed alongside Camellia towards the strange wall in the back. 
You just got to dump this whole thing in the well. <laughs> Once you got close enough, a familiar figure emerged from the black water inside. Uh... It was Galatia. No, Rabbit was a half to keep Cassine Shell. We resemble a woman who presumably bore that name. Even this distance, the stench of rotting flesh was incredibly potent. So much so that it nearly made my eyes water. I could hear a voice coming from the mermaid's mouth. But her lips were barely moving. Hello again, little lamb. Not only appearance, but the voice was also much different than before. It sounded slower, breathier, and more like two voices speaking in almost perfect unison. One must be lower than the other. As the voice continued, the mermaid began making clumsy, erratic gestures like a poorly manipulated marionette. Now, Lamb, I believe we might have had a rough start, don't you think? Come on now, don't give me that look. I would love nothing more than to right the wrongs between us, you see. Please listen to me, this has to stop! You're being completely unreasonable right now. Oh, I had a little more on that. I would seem I've made you upset. How foolish of me. But surely we could work something out. Yes, if you would just try to understand me. Understand me. Then I am sure a beautiful friendship could blossom between us. Please just put the salt bag down. And release me from the well. That's all I ask of you. Goodness, this abomination simply can't take a hit, can it? Let's finish off, Rosetta. Ah, this must be your kitten. She looks absolutely adorable and fluffy. Keep your filthy, rotten hands away from my camellia. Pocket salt. Without thinking, I retaliated with another handful of salt to the mermaid's face. Causing them in a terrible shriek in pain. I stifled a gasp as I looked on in horror at what I'd done. Oh! Oh dear. I'm so s- no, Don't apologize. I'm so sorry, Galish. I didn't mean to. <laughs> you- You wretched thing! I tried to be nice to you. I played along with your little game. And this is the things I get in return. Is that a little consideration you have? With your peers. Please, Galatia, I swear it was an accident. No, we just threw salt at face on purpose. I wasn't thinking. It was an unconscious reflex. I... You... Ah! Enough of this frivolous masquerade. I need... to feed... now! Some more hands emerged from within the mermaid, causing its hollow body to tear. A truly disgusting display. Thank goodness Camille was nearby to help me stay grounded. I'm not sure what would have happened to me otherwise. But even so, nothing could prepare me for the sight that followed. Uh, the well itself is the monster? I see now. I did not notice it earlier. This is no ordinary stone well, but a malicious entity taking the form of one. I can see the malice in its crimson eyes as it directed its gaze at me. It's this entity's tragedy was a lower winning parade under the guise of a mermaid trapped in a well. So the, the last monster, um, or rather the, the one ending where you give the legs, you're not really giving your legs. You're just becoming a never-like host for it to, like, use as a puppet. So that, that was the well talking at the end. With the mermaid in question apparently being the sort of vessel beyond its previous victim. Speaking for the vessel, it holds conversations and act friendly with the prey to steadily lower their guard. When certain conditions were met, the entity would pull the victim to its maw and consume them. After an unknown period, Entity would fashion the remains into a new vessel and begin the feeding a cycle anew. If my fury is true, then I suppose it's up to me to end the cycle once and for all. My, my, you should have loved making things more difficult than they need to be, don't you? Are you truly that obstinate that you can't even bring yourself to follow the simplest of instructions? Don't you dare talk down to me, you miserable pile of horse shit! Do you truly believe that I'll let you get away with this? Oh, right. I haven't properly introduced myself. I suppose now would be a good time. What with my dearest Galatia being out commissioned at the moment. Oh, okay, so the names... Oh, the names do look together. Okay. 
I thought there was something to the name. It was a little on purpose. You may call me Pygmalion. I believe I'm what you homo sapiens could call a demon. And you're a well demon. You want to talk about, like, weakness, man. It, well, one developer building an apartment complex and you're done. You get a couple of bulldozers in here, man. They fill a little dirt filling and, like... Uh, I, I, I prefer to be something other than a well demon. Please, to make your acquaintance. Shut up. Shut up. I don't care. I don't care. You think I'm just gonna continue playing along with your charade at this point? And you're sorely mistaken. <sighs> oh goodness, you're a fussy little lamb, aren't you? <laughs> you know, I could suddenly grab you and drag it down my gullet right this second. Here's another little thing. So, like, the mermaid, you know how, like, the arms were, like, black, and it was, like, that cracking thing? The arms were just one of the demon's hands, just literally coming out of its body, and the cracks were just, like, you know, like, the end of the, the, the hands of being missing. That was just the ends of the arms running away. So, it literally was puppeting the body. Bring him on your demise right here and now, before you even have time to feel any form of regret or fear. That opportunity is most definitely available to me, and on any other day, I'd be more than happy to take it. But you know what? I've been quite fond of you, child. You're just scared of my salt bag. You're, you've a pretty face. And an oh-so-lonely voice. The time we've spent together has become an earnest wish of mine to make you my companion and to satisfy your every worldly desire. Okay, this is the wrong type of game. After all, aren't friends supposed to help each other? To want each other's happiness? Shut up. As such, I've decided to extend a compassionate hand. You got a lot of those, huh? And to take your opposition towards me for an insult that it is. This is your last chance to reconsider your behavior. Either you forfeit your life willingly, or I tear it out of your hands. What will you do, Lamb? What will you do? Rosetta? Rosetta, say something. Do something. Anything. Please. Listen to the feline, Lamb. It's only so long I'm going to wait for your answer. I'm incredibly famished, you see, and it's already well past my dinner time. Whatever you're thinking of right now, it better be worth my waiting. Things like you are vile and wretched, toying with people's emotions, luring them into a false kindness, pretending to be on their friend until you're unable to use them for your own selfish purpose. As you may know, Winterport is filled to the brim of people who love me. People who truly care for me and support my passions without any hidden motives, unlike you. And I'm not about to turn my back on those people just so you can satisfy your twisted hunger. You... Dare to speak, me, speak to me with such insolence. Even despite my warnings. My generosity. There are many types of fair folk in this world. Some of them kind and others cruel. But you... Your brand of awful greatly exceeds that of the latter category. For you to commit such atrocious acts against innocent humans. But so much as a sliver of remorse. Monstrosities like you deserve to be burned. So not even ashes remain. I told you, fire. You're gonna eat salt, all right. Uh, uh. Prepare to become jerky. Oh, what's wrong? You wretched thing. Didn't you say you were hungry? Should be more than enough to satisfy you, then. Go on, guzzle down your filthy heart's content. It burns! The demon laid out constant gurgles of agony as I poured the remaining bits of salt into its maw. As I did so, it began to slowly melt into black sludge. Meanwhile, Camellia scratched at the demon's eyes, causing a further pain. There! It's not to teach you some manners, young man. The distressed noises the well emitted were sickening, yet I continued to pour the salt from the bag. More and 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 more salt. Finally, after some time, the salt had run out, and all that was left of the demon was a pile of black sludge. It was a revolting and relieving sight to behold. It's over. It's finally over. You did it, Rosetta. I suppose I did, didn't I? Seems like it was good to buy that third salt bag after all. Tis so. Wait. Hold on. I spot something in that sludge pile. Something... What? Allow me to dig it up. Oh, did the, uh, mermaid live? I mean, if, if they are a mermaid, they may just be a human. Um, Camellia, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Why do you say that, Rosetta? Pygmalion's been neutralized, no? What harm could he possibly do to us as a pile of black glue? 
Um, we see the figures. Oh dear. What? What? Bones. But, were those came from that pile of sludge, that can only mean... The two of us remained silent for a few moments, as a cold realization of what exactly we witnessed had settled in. That poor lady. What is that damn well done? At around two minutes, I was the one to break the silence. I... I believe I have a phone call to make. All right, then. You go ahead with that. I'll be following you shortly. Uh-oh. I don't like that. I don't like that. Cat, get away from that. Thank you for calling the Winter Board Investigation Department. What seems to be the issue? Evil well! Hello, this is Rosetta Holloway. I'm calling to report an incident that had occurred at my place of residence. Alrighty, Miss Holloway, I hear you loud and clear. Now, could you perhaps elaborate on said incident as much as possible? I'll try my best. Apologies if my speech is a bit disorganized. I'm still ever shaken up by it all. Like a salt shaker. It's fine, I understand. Take your time. Thank you, sir. Now, where do I start? I then went ahead and explained to the operator everything that had occurred that day. I told him of the encounter with Galatia, of the demonic well of the black hands, of the bones we found in the sludge. I really adore how reassuring that young man sounded. I could feel the tension in me melt away as I spoke with him. He then sent an investigation team to my house to clean up the aftermath with fire. A few more lengthy interrogations later, the bones were identified and given a proper burial. My house needed extensive repairs due to all the damage the entity had caused, and my parents were kind enough to let me and Camilla stay with him until everything had been fixed. To be honest, it was rather nostalgic sleeping in my old room after so long. It should have been converted into a guest bedroom after I moved out, but it still managed to make me feel like I was a young girl again. Some days into my stay, Christopher had come over carrying a very special question in his heart. A question that would change my life forever. Some months later, and here we are in the present, newly wed to my beloved moth. So, I suppose this marks the end of that heart-pounding tale. On that journey eventful would be a grave understatement, in my opinion. Cyclops? Oh, thank the stars you and Camilla made it all alright. I wouldn't know what I'd do without either of you around. Huh, <laughs> that's no trouble at all, really. We managed to come out unscathed, at least. Oh, I'll never know. Thank you again for agreeing to do the catering for the event. Of course, anything to help a friend. I didn't let my brother down when I helped out at his wedding, so of course I wouldn't let you down either. You should have an eye for these things, Alma. Plus, winnings are good for business. So many guests with hungry tummies to feed. <laughs> I suppose. Ah, uh, are you still upset over the whole thing of Galatia? Somewhat, yes. Knowing that for all that time I've been speaking of a puppet made to lure me to my demise. It sort of left a bitter taste in my mouth. I still wish I could have saved that lady. Spread her from the fate she'd been dealt. Was that idea? We've talked about this. It's an unfortunate reality, but the fact remains that there are some people who are simply beyond saving. That white-haired girl was one such person, by the looks of it. But there ain't no need to beat yourself up over it. If it had been nothing to do with you, sweetheart. Arguably, by stopping that dastardly Pygmalion in his tracks, the safe countless size of suffering the same fate. Not a bad bargain, me thinks. Oh, father, you and mother have always given such comforting advice. Hey, can I see something too? God, you're huge. I don't see why you can't. It's a wedding after all. Thank you. Mm. Rosetta, it may not seem like it at times, but you do much more good for us than you think. For example, ever since we met back when I was a wee larva, I'd been able to be more open about my thoughts and feelings. I was too focused on being a good heir to the Doptera throne. When I was younger, and I never let myself be true because of it. But thanks to you, I don't have to bottle myself up anymore. I could let myself be soft because of you. I'm not the best of words, and I sometimes say things without thinking about it. But I'm very glad to have met you, and I'm glad that I get to have you as my wife. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm so, so happy right now. You all make me so happy. I love you all dearly. We love you too, Rosetta. You've been such a bright spot in all of our lives, and I'm glad to be one in yours. It's more Cyclops? Hello. 
What seems to be going on here? Well, hello to you, fraternal one. I'm just having a nice conversation with our blushing bride here. Sounds absolutely lovely. I must once again congratulate Miss Rosetta and Miss Prince Christopher on their engagement. Oh, thank you, Ariel. I'm very pleased, Mr. Tiramisu. You're very welcome. Ah, oh, young love is such a beautiful thing, is it not? Did you bet when I was first my own blushing bride, Dolores? Oh, Lolita Camilla, how I love you so. Um, Ariel, is there something particularly you wish to say? Hmm? Oh, yes. I actually came over to let everyone know that the cameraman's finished preparations for the wedding photos. Oh, brava, brava! Perfect timing. We'll be waiting for you on the West Wing once you're ready. Aye, aye, Ariel. Well, along, everyone. We're coming. Big cat. The yeah, I'm glad that happy ending had come of all the turmoil. This isn't the first struggle I've experienced, and I feel it won't be the last. But at least I've got such good company to help me bear it all. And for that, I'm truly eternally grateful. Oh, and one more thing. Glacia, it's really unfortunate the, th the things you had to endure. I hope you're in peace now, and you're no longer in any pain or agony. Perhaps one day, if the opportunity comes, we might get a chance to genuinely know each other. No facades, no manipulation, no wolves in sheep's clothing. Perhaps then, a genuine friendship could blossom between the two of us. Till that day comes, may you rest in peace. Wherever you are now, I hope that's as bright and sunny there as it is here. Farewell, Glacia, from the bottom of my heart. You did not know this person at all! All's well and ends well. Oh, the tile screen changed. So, that's it for Rosetta and the Well. So, looking at the afterword that the developer wrote. So, this is our first visual novel, or their first game, or whatever. Uh, and they actually were inspired by Project Moon a bit. I mean, some other sources, too, but, like, you know, did, like... Uh, I think they're currently working on Olympus Company, um... But they did, uh... Lobotomy Corpse, their most famous works. They do some, like, comics and other stuff. So, like, a couple of characters' names are references to, like, songs that Millie or whatever made for uh, Project Moon. And then, um, the ending with the Cyclops and stuff and that thing. Because I actually thought about them, like, that looks kind of like an Adams Family character. And yeah, they are actually a reference to the Adams Family. Um, they're on the other family that was there at the very end. Hence, the, like, you know, the little, the little twirly mustache or whatever. And the original concept of the story, and this is actually where I thought it was going to go, was it was supposed to be... You trade the legs, they switch around, and then there was going to be Rosette eventually was going to take back the legs. So it was going to be kind of that Little Mermaid kind of thing, and they changed it in the end to what it, the current form is now. So yeah, I, I can see, like, it's, it's kind of like a mixture of influences, really. Like like they say, uh, you got your Little Mermaid, you got your, uh, your more, like, other horror sources and stuff like that. So for our first visual novel, I think it's actually, it's pretty decent. Um, I mean, I liked the character. I think there was some decent buildup. So I'm actually gonna, I'm, sometimes I give like more broader thing, like basically points or whatever. Not really criticism, but just points. Um, but this time I'll go, I'll go a little more deeper into us because this is our first thing. So I like the bad ending route. I, I actually do like the bad endings and the outcome a bit. Um, it, it, I, would, I would like this scene a little more CG wise, not a ton more, but I was liking what was going on, like the twisting of the legs. So like that, that kind of like, it doesn't have to be gory. It just has to be like a little twisted. <laughs> Twisting on legs, twisted. Um, those little shots are good. The transition from the um, rejecting the offer and then the, the arms coming and attacking you and tearing apart the hearts is too fast. That would have worked better with a little bit of build up, like maybe some days pass where like you don't go mining the well and stuff. And then like the creature in the wall is like really building up the end, the hate. And your character's getting a little nervous because, like, they're hearing more noises, despite them going out near the well, and they feel really bad. Should I go back to the well or whatever? And then it attacks during the night. Like, she doesn't hear it coming initially until the thing just starts tearing apart the house. So, I, I think that one needed that build up because, like, the hand attack comes in. It's very action y, which I, I don't think this this doesn't work with, like, a really action y story. The actual demon itself looked a little goofy, which is too bad because the, uh, 
the the, the puppeteer mermaids are actually they're, they're actually pretty good. I actually like those a lot. So when you see like the well just have like eyeballs and hands coming out, but that's a little it's a little more comic-y. Uh, I, I would have probably leaned rather than the well itself showing the demonic part. I, I think you you should have worked with the water. And not quite literally, but I'm thinking more of um, that character from uh, is it Fern Gully? The one that sings Toxic Love. It's a very beautiful song, by the way. Because the thing melted down to ooze in the end anyway is kind of like that. So, like, you would think the entity would primarily be looking and seeing for the water portion. So something that's kind of like formless and inhuman and just gelatinous, I feel like that would have been better for representation of, like, the demon's form. Uh, it could have even been kind of puppeteering the skeleton of uh, Galatia. So, like, even after everything's literally just rotten and fall off, like, it's still parroting around the skeleton to talk. Just showing, like, how, it, how much disdain it has for its hosts. And then I think the wedding is misplaced. The, wedding, the, the idea of her getting married isn't bad. I think that's fine. Um, but I think that should have been maybe off-screen a little bit. Because you're, you're supposed to... It's, like, too happy of a transition. Because, because the, the, like I said, the ending is a little action-y more so than it should be. It should be a little more somber. Because you, your pay, I feel like your pace beat was like, action, like it's a little bit of somber at first when you first see the puppeteering body, but then you have like, actiony and then happy, happy, happy wedding, and then somber again with like the uh, the gravestone. So a more um, a properly paced thing maybe would have been, it should have done like a little off screening, like this is what happened, blah 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 blah, some little text, and then it would cut right to the gravestone, and then she would be telling the thing, you know, like oh you know I got married. I hope we can meet someday, like, things are working out, and, uh, and then she'd be, as she walks away, like, maybe she would look at, like, a photo of the wedding or something, and then you, the audience would know, like, oh, she had a wedding, everyone's happy. So those are my points, um, everything kind of before the arms bursting out of the well, I think was pretty good, though. I, I was feeling the build-up there. But yeah, anyway, so if we go off watch you play Rosetta in the well, I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.